What is up, people? It's a toasty one today. Uh, as you can see, we got the bike running. It, yeah, it's really not that bad moving. Uh, but we got Kevin with us. You guys actually haven't even seen his new bike because the video that I made riding with him, I never even uploaded because it just it just wasn't a good video. It just there is not there is not Kevin ruined it. Kevin ruined the video, so I just didn't even upload it. But he promised me he wouldn't ruin this video today. So uh, yeah, check out his brand new DRZ 400. Oh, oh. Yeah, if you guys don't know, he had a SV650. What was it, 2018? A 2018 SV650. He disassembled the thing going down the highway at like 60, 65. Bike was totaled. He totaled that thing. Bike was totaled, but he's good. So he got himself a DRZ. He got himself a good old supermoto. Brand new, too. Didn't buy it used. Like, got it. Got it new from the dealer. Now it's about to be a, uh, a Harley and a supermoto in the videos now. Which, uh, which is awesome. That's a good, that's like the, that's the best combo, man. You will not believe the headache we went through and everything it turned out to be. Dude, so the last video, my bike died, cut out. If you watched the live stream on Saturday, you saw a lot of it. If you didn't watch the live stream, then, well, kind of sucks for you because that, that was a pretty damn good day. We went through so much on this bike to find out that it was a dead battery. I, uh, dude, I just reached for my handbrake and it's not there. I'll explain that in a bit too, why my handbrake is not there. Found out, dead battery, right? Okay, simple enough. We'll replace the battery. And I bought the exact same battery that I had in this bike. And I get home and I check the battery and it's at 0 0.3 volts off the shelf. It should have been a red flag for me, but I think through all the headache and all the, the, the brain work of trying to figure this thing out, I, I didn't even, the simplest thing didn't even cross my mind. So I'm like, bro, this is a brand new battery. There's no way it's like bad, right? It's 0 0.3 volts, mind you. There's no way it's bad. 0 0.3 volts. It's not bad. It's not a bad battery. No way it's a bad battery. It's brand new. I throw it on the charger and we cannot get the thing past like 10 volts. It's doing the same thing in the bike as my other battery is doing. But what are the odds that we happen to go out and buy a brand new battery that happens to be a bad battery? Like what are the odds of that, you know? And I take the battery back. This thing was at 0 0.3 volts, dog. Swap me out, threw it in the bike. Bike's running, no problems. No problems. Literally, the, this entire time it was a dead battery. It should all end there, right? Like, ha ha ha, funny, funny story about a bad battery, dude. That's crazy. Like, what are the odds? You know, like, what's up? I about fell over waving to that guy back there. <laughs> we get the battery and the bike's running great. We're like, fuck yeah. Kind of a long story, but when I swapped the sprocket, I had to take the handbrake bracket off because, I, I, listen, cock stunt parts. I doubt you're gonna watch this, but if you are, you need you need to redo, you need to redesign your Dyna sprockets, your, your Dyna handbrake brackets, man. The handbrake bracket, it the way it clamps to the swing arm is between the welds and the uh, the rear suspension mount. It which means it literally takes away half of my adjustment, of my total adjustment on the rear axle. So to get this rear sprocket on there, the chain pulled all the way in, the axle pulled all the way in where it has to be because of that handbrake bracket. The chain literally would not fit. I had to adjust it out for the chain to fit. All right, so here's what I'm talking about, all right? Here, this is the Cox handbrake bracket. It's a nice bracket, it is. But the swing arm right here, there goes my knees. You see the shock mount right here, it notches up and then the swing arm is welded and it, it flares out right here. The bracket, the stock one, keeps it locked in right here on this little like tab that comes out of the swing arm. The Cox one uses these little tabs right there that it's, I can't really, it's hard to show. I try to show it backwards, basically they clamp onto it. That's really hard to show. They clamp onto it like that, right? To keep it from, keep it from uh, rotating on the swing arm. But 
if you look, this little tab, that's all the room that it has to adjust. It, it's not a whole lot of room at all. So the adjustment is very little. So the axle literally cannot go past the halfway mark. Like where it's at right now, with this bracket on there, the axle would not even physically be possible to go back this far. Um, it just, I'm not hating, I'm not hating on you, but it just, it kind of sucks because I would love to have a handbrake with the sprocket that I have on now, but I literally don't have a choice. Like it's not even possible with this, with this bracket. Brakes there. tried to shorten the chain that was the problem with the with the gearing that I have the if the axle was all the way in uh, the chain would have been too short if we had cut it to length to fit that it would have been too short we wouldn't have been able to get it together and that was taking one link off so our only other option was to not take a link off but then I couldn't get the axle out far enough to uh, to get the adjustment just right. Anyway, long story short, I had to remove the handbrake bracket to get this other sprocket on. There was no way around it. There literally was no way around it. When we went out, we went out to film this video. Uh, we left my neighborhood and we were riding and I kept feeling, anytime I'd hit a bump, anytime I'd shift, I'd, I'd feel it in the bars and I would hear a very audible clunk and a pop and popping and clunking and shit. Uh, I'm thinking immediately that my, uh, oh <laughs> yeah, you got air on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all, if you guys have watched me enough, you know how many bearings I've gone through. So I'm thinking immediately my front bearings are bad again. So we go back to my house, we pull the wheel off, we're checking the bearings and the bearings feel smooth. And I was so confused, what the hell was making that clunk and that feeling of like the clunk and stuff. Um, come to find out, when I uh, removed the handbrake, when I removed the line, I ran the line in the tank, right? So to get it out of the tank, I had to loosen the tank. Well, obviously this one was tight because I, was, I put the tank seat back on. What I didn't do is tighten this one down. This one wasn't tight, this was just hand tight. So my tank was just clunk, 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 moving all around on the bike. And that's what was making the clunk. And I feel like an idiot. because We ripped the wheel off thinking that it was my, there's no way it could have been the tank. Dude, I out of all the stuff we did, I forgot that we ever even fucking loosened the tank. Let's see what a knee knocker feels like.
let's do a little progress report here. I've been running a 65 juice rocket for a long time and a lot of people had questions about that. They had curiosities about it. I don't have a whole lot to say just yet. I'm gonna give it some time, but one thing I can say right now, playing in first gear wheelies on this rocket, the 56 tooth, hell of a lot more fun than on the 65 tooth. Yeah, you're going in there, I was going too fast. I'll turn up here. Yeah, dude, this brake is uh, super touchy for how squishy it is. Dang, there's a bunch of Harleys here, man. So Harley there, there's a Harley there, there's a Harley there, it's kind of a Harley right here. This was before my year. This is the carbureted one. Yeah, because the front's different. The front's a lot different. All right, we'll be right back. Well, done here at Saku Gear. Homie's in there asking for a wheelie. So we're gonna give him a wheelie. any plans you know well hopefully this sonic goes well then let's go around I'm about to go around him if he ain't gonna go I'm going around dog but dude sitting at a yellow flashing light you're allowed to go and the people will literally just sit there and just stare at the light oh yeah you coming to get me Oh shit! Damn, he whipped out real quick and went after someone. You see that? And I'm not, I think I got so used to those Tokikas not being screwed. Oh, did you see that bicycle do a wheelie? Yeah, I saw you about push the car into traffic. <laughs> do a wheelie! but for some reason I, I want to go onto the other side of the river hit that water for me splash me splash me that's gonna feel good oh yeah oh that felt great <laughs> that felt good I got you on the next puddle <laughs> I know it's kind of odd that that was there huh so crazy it's a, that's a that's such a crazy concept that dude I'm not even gonna lie that dude with his shirt off over there his face looked like do it with Dan no he stole my helmet Dan stole my helmet back in the day no 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 he told people that I stole it because he's bigger than me and people will believe him over me, but he, he stole my helmet. I had the helmet first. I signed a contract with Icon completely. I owned the rights to that. That's a lie. I don't, I'm not gonna make that joke because that could, that could turn into something. Oh, dude, that tunnel. Stock exhaust. <laughs> Do 
Dude, what is that smell? It smells good. It smells like flowers over here and it smells amazing. Like it's kind of rare being in, in like close to downtown Tulsa and actually smelling something good. Yeah, this is the typical downtown. It smells like dirty sand on a beach. When you go to like the lake or something and you're in the like the sand, the, the kind of the dirt with the clay and stuff and you dig into it and it's got that very distinct smell. That's exactly what this smells like mixed with dead fish, mixed with like chemicals like meth that's what that's the downtown smell that i know there's the first one which is real mellow and then it's the second one that hits right here Woo! share the road share the road kevin we have a problem that your name is kevin because i've been watching a lot of tim the tap man lately and he's got this penguin that he talks to that he named kevin and every time he says something to the camera he turns around and immediately repeats it to Kevin. So I feel like every time I say something, I gotta turn to you and repeat it to you, like specifically. This road's kinda rough to do scrapes. That did not feel smooth. <laughs> oh there's a lot of loose gravel up here i think this is the spot that's supposed dude my rear brake's so touchy yeah that's what i'm saying why don't they take this like tiny bit like first layer of trees out man this would be beautiful if they like not even all of them literally like this tree and that tree take this tiny one and that tiny these aren't even i mean these are technically bushes man yeah i don't know if you'd survive but you could yeah but like in possibilities yes it is possible <laughs> damn nature getting in the way of looking at nature yo isn't there like a crash plane back here it's like a helicopter or a plane. I remember way, way back here in a story. It was up here somewhere, and I think somebody was saying, like, if you go hiking on the right trail, you can find the plane. Dude, I'm gonna look that up. If there's a, uh, if there's a plane crash, if there is a plane crash out here and it's still here, I will look it up. I'll try to figure out how to get to it. And we, yeah, we'll come back and we'll do a follow-up. And we'll, uh, we'll try to get to the plane crash and go explore a plane crash. Uh -huh. My bike pulls a little bit to the left. Oh, it may have been in that road because now it's going. But it says slow, dangerous curve. Here, I'll drop a gear. Oh, no. There's no way. There's no way. Nope. There's no way. Oh. I about lost my water. It was on it was on my tank seat. I thought if I did a sit down it would stay. That's the armory. This is where we were coming home from drill one weekend. And we were th those doors right there. We were standing out of those doors and we were like standing there waiting for our rides to come pick us up. And homeboy comes up to me and he he comes up to me and another group of guys that are standing there. And he's like, "Hey, check this out." And he opens his fucking backpack, bro, and he had a flashbang in his backpack. <laughs> we were like, "Where the hell did you get a flashbang?" He just started laughing and walked off, dude. He had a, a whole ass, like, legit flashbang in his bag. You are getting sketchy bringing a flashbang into the armory and shit, like. Look at the water and the sunlight, sweating. Does that not, does that not make you want to go get a big old glass of water right now? Watching this video, comment. Comment how many of you had to pause this video to get up and go get some water. Looking at this, look at that. Look at that shining through the sunlight. That's beautiful. Oh, loose gravel. 
It says motorcycle extreme caution. Okay. Well, I would really like to know where. We just won't take the big corners like super hard. Just dude, if, I, if we fall on this, our skin is getting grated off. This stuff is rough. Man, that sucks too, because this is like, this is, I love these corners, man. There's some, there's some loose shit, yep. That's in a bad corner for that to be there too. Oh my God, there was a deer that scared me. There's a car coming right there, but it's far enough away. I want to go look at it, dude. Dude. What are you doing, dear? You scared us. Dang. All right, well, I'm probably gonna go ahead and end the video right there because the last I saw my battery was at 12% and that was at the gas station before we got to that road. Uh, that's gonna be it. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, because I sure did. And uh, don't forget to go follow my Twitch. Um, live almost every night and uh, yeah. Take it easy. I'll see you guys on the next one.